Hello everyone. Uh, I just wanted to come on here for a little chat. Uh, I was kind of guided to sit down and make a video and um, what's been coming up at the moment for me on a personal level seems to correlate with uh, some of the themes coming up on the collective level so I kind of wanted to come on here and talk a little bit about it and hopefully offer some comfort not advice <laughs> I don't know that there's any advice one can give in times such as these um, but just to offer a little uh, bit of strengthening <laughs> I think I know I need it right now um, we've always known this time on the planet was coming we've we've been warned about it we've we've prophesied about it um, channels such as myself were talking about this great wave of change but it feels at this time that you know you barely find your feet before you're knocked down to your knees again and another wave and another wave and another wave keeps coming in and you know even those of us who have the spiritual tools to be able to alchemize our experience and move through it uh, usually fairly quickly are experiencing just another level of emotional mental physical challenge um in a way that you know it, it can be hard to quantify and can be quite confusing to move through and those of us that are sensitives are really experiencing the feeling of the emotional ructions of the whole collective and um coming back into your center and earthing yourself is becoming more and more important on a daily basis and one of my best remedies and tonics <laughs> is just to go and stand with my bare feet on the grass in the morning or whatever time of day it is and over summer my favorite thing to do is just to stare into this huge blackberry bush that we have in our garden because the the bumblebees are always so busy around that bush and it's almost like looking into a little microcosm of the busyness of these bees but what I find so refreshing about this uh this beautiful little portal into nature is that these bees just seem to be so joyful and a lot of them are buff bottom bumblebees so they're rolling around they've been rolling around in the pollen and having a great time um, the blackberry bush um, has given us its harvest and is dying back now so I need to find a new uh, sort of meditative nature pastime but I wanted to talk a little bit about emotion because uh, I've been writing and working on a, a new oracle deck and uh, you might be familiar with my Archangel Fire oracle and um, my book that's coming out, Archangel Alchemy Healing. And But my latest oracle is called the Water Alchemy Oracle and it is all about just the properties and the principles and the themes and the remedies and the magic of water. And uh, as I was kind of channeling and writing it, again, <laughs> it seems I, uh, I, don't, I don't get away with this. You know, I, I never just write an oracle or write a book. I have to walk through and live every single initiation in that oracle and in that book in my own daily life. So I've been on a huge path of emotional mastery most of my life but it has definitely intensified and sped up with the writing of this oracle and I'm sitting here kind of going why did I choose to write a water oracle all about emotion at a time on the planet when so much of our emotional landscape feels like utter chaos <laughs> and the answer really is because it is a tool to help people through these times it is you know if our emotions are a choppy sea this oracle is meant to serve as a bit of a life raft unfortunately while I've been writing it I haven't really had a life raft 
And, um, you know, I, I know many of us have been dealing with these themes and I myself have been dealing with the death of loved ones, um, unexplained, shocking uh, situations um, with my family, watching family members really go through their own personal challenges, seeing people really struggle with how to move through events that just feel so overwhelming, both on a global scale and on a personal level. And it seems that not really any of us are getting off scot-free. It, it's like, yes, we've had the backdrop of this pandemic. Now they're talking about financial situations and all kinds of things and the energy prices and whatever else they want to throw in the mix. Um, but we're all each sort of dealing with our own personal initiations and to deal with those personal initiations against that backdrop of huge global change is a, a, a bit challenging to say the least. So I just wanted to see if I could offer something on here that might be a little bit of a, uh, a stabilizing uh, point to help people through these times. And, you know, uh, going in nature is one thing, but if you can't get out into nature and if you can't um, access a beautiful view, you can go there in your mind. And uh, it's this that I feel they're calling me to work with for you now. And uh, I recently went on holiday to Greece and I had the most incredible, incredible view in Greece. And uh, I, I was woken up nearly every morning to watch the sunrise and the sunrise was magnificent. And there was one particular morning where I sat and I filmed the sunrise for four minutes and 44 seconds. And it was this most golden sunrise. And to me, I thought, well, this is a metaphor. This, this sunrise is the metaphor for really where we're heading, really where we're going. And uh, when we experience these times of hardship and despair, we must always remember that the sun will shine again, that, you know, they do say it's always darkest before the dawn. You know, the other night I felt this incredible energy of despair and some of it was mine and some of it I think was in the collective some of it might have just been timelines shifting and changing and normally when you know I'm hit with a, a really heavy emotion like that as humans we kind of want to if we feel an emotion, we want to go into our logical mind and try to explain to ourselves why we're feeling that way. And I think that sometimes we do ourselves a little disservice by doing that. Sometimes it's like we we look for a reason why we're feeling a certain way. And I used to do this a lot when I was younger before I really had the tools to move through my emotions. I used to think, well, I must be feeling this way because. And then I would almost create a story around it. But these days I, I less create a story and just drop into observation of the emotion and just come into a loving acceptance of it. And, you know, they, we say the, the brightest light casts the darkest shadow. Well, it's very true. And so when I feel a really particularly low emotion, I try not to judge it. One of the, the best tools I've ever connected with is unconditional love and stepping out of judgment. And that includes out of judgment for myself, out of judgment for my feelings and my emotions. We might not be able to control situations in our lives, but we can control the way we react to them and we can control the way that we feel and we can choose how we want to feel. Um, and I recently went on a, a beautiful coaching platform to do some emotional alchemy and the coaching platform is called Change Your World Every Day. And it's run by a lovely lady called Susie Beaumont. And um, I'll pop the links to that under here because I did a whole emotional alchemy course and that is still available. There's a free, um, there's a free trial for Change Your World Every Day that you can sign up for and, and you'll get access to that coaching week. And um, But I'm just going to share the, the simple tips really here with you now. And that is just to... When you are hit by heavy or low emotions, 
And I mean, despair is a pretty low emotion. And I know I wasn't the only one sort of feeling that way yesterday. Try not to engage with it and try not to judge it. I know that's hard because they feel quite overwhelming, our feelings sometimes. Try to sit back and just observe the emotion. Just observe it. And have compassion for yourself in the feeling of it. Just have compassion. Tell yourself it is completely acceptable for me to be feeling this because I am a human and we have emotion. And for whatever reason this emotion is arising, it is obviously here to tell me something. It is here to show me something and it wouldn't be here if it didn't have a purpose, if it wasn't serving me in some way, if it wasn't showing me something. And I like to connect to my emotions as though they're little friends. And if you saw the emotion itself as like a little being with its own consciousness, it's wanting your attention. So I could imagine that this despair was like a little being that was feeling despairing, that needed my support, that needed my attention and that needed my help. And then I would imagine that I can have a conversation with it. And all of this can happen in your imagination. If you could imagine what this little consciousness of despair or whatever feeling you're feeling was trying to tell you, what would it be trying to teach you? What would it be trying to show you? What does it need from you? And when I, if I were to tune in to that feeling of despair, I just get this one word, alone, alone. A feeling or a fear of being alone. And I know that after we've been in all these lockdowns, there have been a lot of people that have been alone. But ultimately, we're born alone and we die alone. Well, not really, because we have the support of spirit. But there are many initiations going on that we have to walk through alone in our daily lives as well. And it's like we're being called to kind of pull ourselves up by our bootstraps and be our own inner support, be our own inner tower, be our own inner backstop. And as a healer and an alchemist, I've kind of dedicated my life to gathering around myself a toolkit to heal myself, to be able to heal myself, to be able to navigate these emotions and to be able to help myself, I suppose, help myself. And I really feel like we're moving into a time on this planet where we must become our own healer. We must become our own cheerleader. We must become our own pillar of strength. We must become our own warrior. And it's like we talk a lot about healers just being facilitators and we're not gurus and we can't wave a magic wand and we can't rescue people. I've just had to take a whole year off seeing clients after a very stressful court case that I was involved in and... I needed to take care of myself and you know there's this walking a fine line of not leaning on or being lent on too much and really finding your inner center your your inner point of stillness and so I feel like just sitting back in meditation and really gifting yourself some time each day to go within, check in with how you're feeling, make friends with your emotions, because if you keep suppressing your feelings, eventually they're going to erupt or the trapped emotions will eventually turn into potentially illness or dis-ease in the body. And, you know, we, we, everyone is going through their own stuff and we cannot expect each other to play rescuer to each other but having compassion 
and being there for one another, but also understanding what each other are going through is incredibly healing. And sometimes just knowing that somebody is there for you in terms of having a chat, not trying to fix anything, but just lending an ear, just listening. And, you know, even if somebody says, gosh, I'm so sorry you're going through that. I don't know what to say. I don't have a solution, but I'm, I understand. That compassion is sometimes enough. It can feel really overwhelming when you feel like you can't reach out and help a lot of people. I look out over the world and, you know, I used to kind of be one of these people to be like, I want to fix everybody, but that's exhausting and we, we just can't do that. The way to fix everyone is by fixing yourself, by gifting yourself the time to go within and spend a moment honoring your emotions, thanking them for coming, asking them, you know, what are you here to teach me? How are you here to assist me? This feeling of despair that came up yesterday that feels so present in the collective at the moment and, you know, the message of alone. When we uh, hear that, you know, it, when I first hear the word alone, my perspective was immediately to go to loneliness, to go into, oh gosh, you know, I don't want to be on my own. But actually there's a gift in that. There's a huge gift in that. Alone can also mean, you know, you can do this. You can do this on your own. You've got this. You've got this. Alone you are, you can stand tall. You can be there for yourself. What if you could, in your aloneness, find your solitude and your solace and your inner strength and find your, you know, when we're alone, it's when we're most likely to find our divinity with God, with Goddess, because we have that time and space to really connect and go within. And it's in that time of stillness and solitude that we really find ourselves. And then we can gift ourselves all the love and the comfort that we need. And if you can do that, then you cannot, you can't be manipulated and you can't be um, hoodwinked and you can't really be lied to because you know yourself. We're really navigating this space of the, the subtle and the spiritual realms much more these days. It's harder and harder just to live as a 3D human being with a closed heart and a closed mind and literally just being on the treadmill of life because we're all of us now awakening to spirit and all of us are beginning to have experiences and we're all being able to, to feel each other. We're realizing that we are one in the all. I'm just looking at my clock and it's gone 2020 <laughs> on the clock, which of course is the double numbers and the gateway numbers. So two obviously being partnership union we we each need to understand that we're all connected the more that we can gift ourselves with some alone time if we flip that perspective and like don't freak out about being alone instead gift yourself with some alone time gift yourself with some time for private introspection for prayer don't be afraid to say to people I'm sorry I need to be on my own. I'm sorry I need some space. I need some time. I had to do that with a friend this afternoon. And, you know, the other thing I would love to share is just to maybe even sign up for a class or a, you know, a meditation class or a healing class or something where you can gift yourself with some time to learn how to be comfortable with yourself, how to be comfortable to be alone how to learn some tools to navigate your own way through your healing and alchemy. So I'm going to share the beautiful sunrise at the end of this video. I actually made a little video while I was in Greece. I can't even remember what I said on it, but <laughs> I might even, um, if it's still relevant, I'll share it at the end here but I'm going to share the, the four minutes and 44 seconds of the beautiful sunrise that I videoed in Greece on Santorini, beautiful Love Island. 
um, so that you can spend a few minutes alone in beautiful introspection but with some hope in your heart that the sun will rise again and as hard as it is now just know that we're all walking through this together so even if you feel alone you really aren't because we're going through this as a collective if you would like to learn some really helpful tools to help you navigate through this really tough tricky and exciting time on our planet I am running a an alchemy conference with a dear brother of mine beloved Colm Holland and he is also a fellow alchemist Colm actually wrote the foreword for my book Archangel Alchemy Healing and he has written a book called The Secret of uh, The Secret of the Alchemist and um, he has a an alchemy mystery school as well we are going to be running this conference together in person which is so exciting in beautiful Glastonbury in the heart chakra of our planet in Avalon on the 5th and 6th of November this year 2022 there's all the all the twos again and uh, I will share all the links below as well and it, it, we have really we both kind of had a shared vision of this and it came up in conversation and we realized that we were being guided by spirit to run this event together and uh we just really want it to be a big love in. We just don't want we just don't want anyone really to feel alone and we see this as a a community event. We have loads of speakers. We have 15 beautiful speakers offering workshops and healing and music and mantra and um we have panels and keynote speakers and uh, a beautiful selection of people from kundalini yogis to shaman to channels to people who are working with performance and comedy and spiritual mediumship and of course alchemy and the idea is that we're all going to be gifting you with with practical tools so that you can learn some tips and techniques to take away with you we're not going to just be up there talking about the things that we do this is about you this is about you guys this is about sharing community and we're as much there to learn as we are to share and um i just can't wait i, I really want to be amongst a group of loving like-minded people and uh to share a hug and to be able to look in the eyes of people and and say i i get it i'm, I'm not going through it in the quite the same way as you are but I know the feeling and I, and I want to share from my heart the things that have helped me along the way. So if you feel like you'd love to come and, and be amongst like-minded people and share a loving space of unconditional love and learn to use unconditional love to alchemize your life, please, please join myself and Colm. It's a, gosh, feel really emotional I, <laughs> I kind of feel like I came on here and I didn't really know what I was going to say and it, it, I feel a bit like I might be rambling but you know what it's it's a water theme and it's about fluidity and it's about going with the flow and not planning what you're going to say and just letting it roll like waves on the ocean <laughs> roll out and um you know, I know us healers, we look like we've got it all together and everyone looks like they're having a great time on social media, but we're all of us struggling right now. And the more that we can have compassion for each other, the more we're going to more easily support each other along the way. Just before I share the sunset, I'd, I'd also like to pull a card just to see what guidance the angels are bringing us. And as I've pulled the the pack out of the deck it's, it couldn't be too perfect really because the card sitting right on top is beloved archangel Uriel and he really is an angel of deep forgiveness and compassion and he comes with this sacred fire this sacred flame here and um, in the book he, he you work with 
uh, the symbol of the firefly of freedom, but you bring the flame down through into your emotional body and um, it will help to release any sort of stuck emotions for you. It's very deep emotional cleansing, but I'm going to read you the message from Uriel here today. And it's all about, he, he's really all about releasing our emotional pain and helping us to move through into deeper levels of compassion. And the message says, let go of anger and unforgiveness and let my flame of love illuminate your heart. I can help free you from emotional pain. If you don't know the right words to say, call on me and I will speak through your heart. Um, it's a bit perfect really for um, for what we're dealing with and then the second card that we have coming up is the Shekinah and of course the Shekinah representing beautiful divine mother and here she is weaving the world anew recreating the world and uh, it's a really really powerful divine cosmic mother energy such deep mercy comes from this energy and she really helps us to return to the womb of creation. It's almost like at the moment we're being asked to recreate ourselves anew. I have felt on a personal level really lately so far removed from the person I thought I was. And, whew, gosh, the emotion. Um years and years of deep challenge and deep shadow and deep growth and deep cracking open is uh, really to thank for that. But I still feel like I haven't quite found my feet with the person I'm becoming. So this time now for me, I always experience sort of global patterns and, and big themes on a very personal level and this time for me feels like we're in such a huge collective crossroads it's like as a humanity we're moving away from what we thought we were but we haven't quite arrived at who we're becoming and there's this feeling of being a little bit all at sea there's the water theme again feeling a little bit lost and we really have to come home to ourselves and again this message of alone alone to spend some time alone and really learn who you are really figure out what makes you tick what are your true core desires and perhaps you might be experiencing you know the things that you thought you wanted the things that you thought where perhaps your core desires and wishes might have seemingly changed overnight. You might, you might actually not be wanting what you thought you wanted. There's such a shift of timelines going on now. And we're seeing people walking out of relationships, people walking out of careers, people moving countries. And we've realized, I think, during this whole time that life is for living, you know, and so many people are leaving the planet. There's such a huge waves of grief because of so much loss so much hardship and yet so much raw beauty so much compassion arising we're really really seeing who we are who we want to be and the kind of world we want to live in and the kind of world we don't want to live in and sitting alone in a bit of introspection oh, dropping cards can actually help you to get really clear on the world that you want. Gosh, well, it couldn't be too perfect, could it? So talking of the crossroads, <laughs> we have Soged Hosey holding the balance, walking the tightrope and uh, trying to hold it together. But what I'm drawn to in the background here are the, the hot air balloons rising and it's like the excitement, interestingly, this card is, um, the backdrop of this card is Russia, is Russia. So it feels a bit like the situation with Russia and the Ukraine is quite a wake-up call for humanity and it's holding this delicate balance 
um, as a result of this conflict? What do we want out of life? There was also the balance of the masculine and feminine as the goddess returns to our earth. And the other card that flipped out, um, both of them sitting on the orange ray, is beautiful Barakio, who is all about blessings. She's got the bread basket on her head. It's all about nourishment. And she's carrying the baby. So again, this speaks to me of rebirth. We're coming from this crossroads and we're about to come into a real time of blessing, of sacred union. She's also an angel of marriage and of um, multiple blessings and nourishment. The, the balloons in this tell me we're rising out of this tricky time into a whole new paradigm. And um, that just feels really beautiful. And then finally, I pulled Gal Galiel, and this is all about coming back into our power and feeling like, Yes, this is solar power. We feel ready to take action. The chariot, of course, is full steam ahead, feeling swiftness, the end of delays, and so much abundance with that gold there. So it does feel to me that although we're in this time of what feels like it, quite a treacherous time, quite a, a time of upheaval and unpredictability and not being able to really know or see a way through that we're just having to kind of go through this collective wilderness zone where the path is the path is not the path anymore the path has disintegrated below us and we're flying blind <laughs> through the darkness but we must trust that divine mother and divine father really have us and um, what we're going to see on the other side of all this really is the new humanity and uh, just feels like we're all being forced into our humility and into the truth of who we really are so really get comfortable with who you really are really start to ask questions of who am I what are my true desires what do I really want out of life what 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 does life mean to me is there something in my life that's not working anymore and just be willing be willing, be curious, be willing to see what's revealed to you in the inner parts of your psyche. And um, yeah, I just want to say if you're having a tough time, I feel you. I'm sorry you're going through that. And remember to really be kind to yourself and um, sending so much love. Hope to see you in November and uh, I hope that you enjoy the beautiful sunrise. Thank you. Good morning, everybody. It's very early here. I am currently on holiday in Santorini in Greece. And uh, this morning I'm up with the sunrise and I was swimming in the ocean the other day and I was requested by Mother Ocean to record a short meditation or a short video inviting people to meditate on the water and to send peace to the waters of the earth, which includes, of course, the waters of our bodies. And uh, so I've recorded a short sequence, which is four minutes and 44 seconds of sunrise for you so that you can share in the beautiful sunrise here on Santorini. I've got this amazing view where I'm staying and uh, the invitation is to just watch the sunrise over the water. Send peace and love from your heart to the waters of the world. I'm currently working on a water alchemy oracle which is all about the blessings of water, the magic of water, the miracles of water. We need water for life. It's so vital and so important. And while I've been researching my oracle, I've come across a beautiful, beautiful program, which is called the Water for Peace Project. And it's connected to the beautiful work of Masaru Emoto, who of course wrote the famous messages in water. And I would invite you to look them up. I will share all the links to their work below as well. 
and exactly what I'm requesting or inviting you to do now is they, on the 11th of every month, they do a water meditation and you can join in. It's completely free and it's just beautiful work to invite you to focus on the water, send love to the water. We need to protect the waters of our earth and um, we need to protect the waters of our body because water is life and without it we cannot exist. So I'm going to focus in on the, the sunrise here behind me and you can see the sun rising over the water and see the golden light, just invite that golden light into your heart, into the waters of your own body and just see that golden light spreading all the way out through the waters of the earth, the oceans of the earth, the waters of the earth, your body, the plants, the animals with blessings of love to all and peace to all and I wish you the most beautiful day excuse my glasses <laughs> it's very early in the morning sending you love and peace and joy and blessings and miracles thank you